And welcome, this is Baller Scuba with Radical Dreamers. This is a game that was released in 1996 by Square, but in Japan only. It was released through the Satellaview, which was an add-on for the Super Famicom. The Satellaview was essentially a modem. You would download the game through the service, and then you would have it on your system without having a physical copy of the game. As a result, though, Japan only. Thankfully, in 2003, DemiForce was able to translate it for us non-Japanese speakers. So thank you, DemiForce. So I am able to play the game now. This is essentially a visual novel style game. It is a side story to Chrono Trigger, released one year after Chrono Trigger. And what we are going to see in this game is essentially going to be the foundation for Chrono Cross. But it cannot be, in the strictest sense, considered a prequel to Chrono Cross. But we're going to go through it nonetheless. That is going to lead up to Let's Play Chrono Cross. But for the time being, we're going to be going through Radical Dreamers. We're going to start with Le Trésor Interdit which does mean, according to Wikipedia, uh, the unstealable jewel. Let's get the game underway. For those of you that have played Chrono Cross before, you're going to see a lot of things that are familiar. The text speed, for whatever reason, this is in French, but we're going to go with fast speed. I do like having a fast text speed. Let's get the game underway. Boy, did her information help? I thought the perimeter's counterspell would be quite a problem. Kid's braid sways gently from side to side in the cool nighttime breeze. So far, we've managed to slip through the magical shield network undetected and sneak into Lynx's domain. Still, this inner region can make for some pretty rough travel. Kid, Majel, and I comprise this party of three. It's been something like three years since Kid and I met. Back then, I was a drifter, wandering wherever my music led me. During my stay in the remote town of Regiora, I ended up running into a girl who later joined me, leading to the beginning of all this. That girl was Kid. Kid is a thief, of course. Not even 17 years old, she's already widely renowned as a top professional. To make matters worse, she's cute, devilishly stylish, and has a sparkling personality. And boy, can she cook if you ask her, that is. Well, to be completely honest, she has her share of problems as well. She likes to think of herself as a kind of Robin Hood, stealing from the rich and giving to the poor, but that's just not the case. At times, her sharp tongue can get the best of her, viciously lashing out at anyone who stands in her way. She exaggerates every other word and sometimes lies outright. And as for listening to other people, well, forget it. When it comes to money, well, I've never met anyone greedier in my life. Her relentless pursuit of wealth is ironic, considering she's a nomad like me. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too hard on her. She has her good points, too. She can really shine sometimes, when she wants to. Glancing back over my shoulder, I notice a silhouette silently emerge from the grave. From the grove. Not from the grave, from the grove. Majel. This associate of kids is known to us only as Majel of the Shadows. I know next to nothing about him, except for the fact that he somehow knew Kid before I came into the picture. A high-class magician of some sort, he looks to be about 30. He usually keeps to himself, though. The top half of his face is covered with a mask at all times. Never even seen what he really looks like. At times, it seems as though I'm hanging around someone from another world. Traveling with this pack is definitely an interesting experience. Kid's quiet about her past, too, but it's like I know her entire life story compared to how little I know about Majel. From time to time, I find myself wondering who he is, where he came from, and so on. I'd ask Kid, but I get the impression she knows as little about him as I do. You might be wondering, how did I end up where I am now? Well, there's a lot of reasons, I suppose. I guess you could say that life doesn't always go how you plan. Suddenly, Kid, kid comes to an stop. Seems someone wants to say hello. I have a nearby thicket. Two shimmering eyes catch my attention. Whatever it is, it's staring at me silently. After a few moments, a few pairs of eyes appear. They seem to be surveying the area. 
A deep feline growl breaks the uncomfortable silence, and I realize we're being hunted by a pack of feral cats. A few of the figures slowly approach from behind the trees. I look behind me, only to see that they've already encircled us. A few more slowly creep in, now totaling about ten. Chills run down my spine. In a daze, I clumsily unsheath my knife, grasping it tightly as I bite my lip. Kid stands ready with an air of composure. Careful, mate. These buggers are probably rabid. Growling increases. Now a constant rumble all around us. Their yellow eyes shimmer like jack-o'-lanterns while saliva drips from their snarling jaws. The middle one's stomach gurgles as its eyes widen, fixed directly on me. Looks like we ain't getting out of this one without a fight. What do we do? All right, we have our first choice. You want to be kind of quick here? We're going to go for attack. I slash viciously at a nearby cat. Oh, this music. Startled, it leaps back with, an in with incredible reflexes. I stay my ground, not getting any closer to the beast. Hearing a howl, I know I've hit my mark. Licking its wounds, the animal recovers after a moment of pain. I ready my knife, waiting for my next chance to attack. Surge, behind you! I turn around to see that I'm now face to face with a pair of those ravenous yellow eyes. We're going to attack again. There's no time! I duck as the cat lunges and snaps at me. I smell the bloody odor of the cat's breath as it passes overhead. Just as I think it's past me, I feel its back claws dig into my back. Yeah, that is what we want to do. There's a reason for this. We have a certain amount of health points and a certain amount of relationship points, so to speak. Uh, this is going to cost me a couple health points, but I think it will work out best for me in the long run. Scrambling out of the way, I managed to shove my knife upwards, playing it deep within the animal's belly. The sound of death can be heard as the cat falls to the ground before me, barely moving. Almost delirious, I lose balance and fall to my knees. Rolling over, I manage to shake off the confusion before any of the other cats can get any closer to me. I take a deep breath and try to tighten my grip on my knife, now slippery with sweat. Then, out of nowhere, a kid flashes across my field of vision, landing a direct hit onto a cat beside me. The cat screeches in pain as kid pins it to the ground, stomping and kicking it with all her rage. Without a moment's delay, she boots the animal up underneath its jaw. It moves no more. All of a sudden, the crazed atmosphere gives way to a war cry behind me. I whip around to see Majel's Inferno spell setting the cat's head ablaze. It jumps up, screeching and howling in madness before running away wildly. In confusion, it runs directly into a tree and knocks itself out cold. I look around and see that only one of the pack hasn't been taken care of yet. As Kid and I start to close in on the beast, it bolts, fearing for its life. Well, that was some workout, eh, mate? Kid says Kid, coming towards me as she tends to her arm. I take a deep breath as I look around, trying not to step on too many of the bodies. I'll admit I was a little worried back there at times, but nothing too serious happened. I try talking to Majel, despite knowing how he'll react. Are you all right? With an expressionless face, he looks down at me blankly. You need not worry about me. Wow, the affection is just overflowing from that guy. However, I probably shouldn't start complaining now. We've still got a long way to go. We haven't even set foot inside Viper Manor yet. That is where we're headed, Viper Manor. Kid glances over at me, seeming eager as ever, ready to tackle what's next. You gonna hang around all night or what, mate? No way. Let's go. Hey, come here. Trying to ignore my aches and pains, I head over towards Kid. Good job back there, mate. She comes closer. I can see the reflection of the moon in her eyes as she gives me a warm, comforting smile. But come on, we can't just stand around all night. There's treasure waiting to be found. I'm still lost in her eyes as she starts to set off. Majel continues behind her without a hitch. I hurry to catch up behind the two. In a pa place like this, Getting separated would be a bad idea. We continue to make our way through this natural labyrinth of wood and rock. Somewhere, quietly waiting within this huge forest, Viper Manor beckons us. Deep within lies the treasure we've come for. Lord Lynx, as he's formerly known, is an aristocrat who governs the Regiona. 
from the way Kid talks, he's apparently an old adversary of hers. I was reaching your rock before. Either way. Tonight, our goal is Lord Lynx's most prized possession, a scarlet jewel known as the Frozen Flame. Oh, this all sounds so familiar. Besides being priceless, some say this beautiful stone harbors some sort of mystical power. They say many people have sought after the flame, but none have been victorious in stealing it. Viper Manor has claimed many lives. But we will succeed. We pride ourselves on making the impossible possible. Besides, the way Kid talks about Link sometimes sounds like she's got an awfully personal vendetta against him. We can't lose. We've come too far to lose. And so, after having spent countless hours crossing this dreary, lonesome forest, the silhouette of a towering mansion finally comes into view through the trees. We made it, Kid shouts. Your days are numbered, Lynx! We quickly make our move, quietly dashing out from behind a thicket. Once at the mansion wall, we creep stealthily along the perimeter, searching for an entry point. After a short while, we come upon a terrace near a garden, which looks relatively inviting. It doesn't look like there are any guards on patrol. Still, the mansion gives, us, gives off a strange sort of morbid feeling as quiet as death. Majel gazes up at the towering fortress. We can enter into the west wing from here. There's no need to look elsewhere. Okay, let's go, Kid says, jumping over the terrace handrail. Halt! Shouts Majel from behind, staring at Kid. Our goal is the frozen flame, not vengeance against Lord Lynx. Remember this, Kid. Aye, no prob, she says, glancing over her shoulder. Ain't gonna be nothing to it, like taking candy from a baby. We'll be out of here before that f slimy rat knows what hit him. Yeah, you low-down, good-for-nothing bastard, I'll make you pay! There she goes again. Come on, I'm getting tired of waiting around, she yells before bolting into the mansion. Majel shakes his head in silence as I chase after Kid, already deep inside. The darkness engulfs me.